Hey, Andrew here, and welcome to Offshore Audio. Today, we're going to take a look at connecting a digital audio workstation, a DAW, to an M32 console and getting the multi-track files from that DAW playing on the M32 console. I had someone ask me about this, about connecting a DAW to a console, multi-tracks. And so I decided to take a bit of a deep dive into it and we'll be looking into it over uh, the course of a few videos. So I'm gonna look at, first of all, getting in and out of an M32 or X32 uh, console because those are really quite prominent in the, in the audio industry, especially at kind of uh, beginner level venues. But then I'm also going to take a look at getting in and out of a Yamaha console using Dante because Dante is also incredibly prevalent in the audio industry. So it's really important that you know that. But more of that to come in the future. For now, let's dive into the M32. So you want to run a virtual sound check without your band. You wanna get multi-track files playing in your DAW and you wanna have them coming up on your faders here so that you can mess about. You could even mix them in the venue. You could just play with multi-tracks or you could use them to test the system or they could be multi-tracks from a previous gig and you're using them to sound check for a band that isn't there yet. So we're gonna take a look at that and we're gonna find out how we do that. Let's crack on. First things first, I'll show you how to do this in the back of this M32 that I have here. This applies to any other M32 or X32 consoles, big or large, that have a USB card on the back. Now, these might have been swapped out for a Dante card or something like that, so you need this USB card to be able to do this on an M32 or X32. This happens to be a Clark Technic card. That'll come in useful in just a moment. First of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect it to the laptop using a cable. It's this kind of USB cable on the front and then a normal USB on the other side. I can't remember what they're called, type C or something, or type two. So we just connect that into the mixer and then we take the other side, rather obviously, and connect it into the laptop, which I have here. We've connected our laptop to our mixer via the USB connection here. So what we need to do now is we need to download the drivers so that our laptop can communicate properly with the mixer here. So the card on the back of this mixer was called a Clark Technic uh, USB. We can just Google it, Clark, Clark Technic USB M32 driver. It's gonna be the first hit. So we'll just go in here and if we look over on the right hand side, you'll see software USB audio driver. So you just download that, open it up, extract it, do what you will. And then run the application to install the driver. It's gonna pop up down here somewhere. Yep, great. Click next through everything. It'll just install it to your hard drive. And then once it's done, you're good to go. We can reboot manually later. So once you've rebooted your system, what you want to do is you want to go to your audio settings and make sure that you can see your, you know, your USB card. So in this case, it was a Clark Technic. On Windows, you just go down and click on the speaker input down here, click on the arrow here, and you would see out Clark Technic. So you can choose the outputs of your Clark Technic card, your USB card on, that's going to the mixer. That's just so that we can find out that our computer recognizes that we have now connected to this USB card, which is good, we have. On a Mac, I know you'll need to go into audio MIDI setup to see that that's available there. So let's open up our DAW. I'm gonna be using Pro Tools, but it'll work on whatever, as long as you know how to set up input devices and so on on your DAW. So you'll go to your playback engine where you set up your input devices. And I'm just going to make sure that my playback engine is set to this TN32 driver. So now I know that Pro Tools is sending out to that USB card. It's using that USB card as its sort of output. So then we can just come down here and we can uh, set our output tracks. So kick on output one, I'll take my snare on output two. The overheads can go out on outputs three and four. And let's just say my bass out on output five. So it's just a really simple setup. And then when we press play in our DAW, it will be sending it to our mixer. 
Last thing we need to do is we need to set up the mixer input channels to receive sound from that USB card where these tracks are now being sent. So let's take a look at the mixer. So we've connected everything up with the USB, the laptop to the mixer. We've downloaded the drivers. We've set the tracks up in our DAW to play out on the channels that we want. We just need to set up the routing on the desk. So we'll just go to our routing page. If you don't know about this, you can look at the routing video that I made earlier, but basically we're just gonna select the channels or the banks that we want to be the input from the USB card. So I select card one to eight. If I wanted 16 channels, I can go card nine to 16. I can have up to 32 channels coming from my laptop into the mixer through this card. But I'm just gonna pick the first eight for now. So now that I've changed my routing, I just need to go to my laptop, play back my tracks, and you will see that they come in on the inputs that I've set. So that's my kick drum, my snare drum, my overheads, my bass, just like I set up in the DAW earlier. And so that's great. That means that maybe if you're in a studio and you want to use a mixer like this to mix a, a track, a multi-track that you've recorded, you can do that. You can also use earlier files that you recorded from a previous sound check to have a virtual sound check. So now you could have your band from the previous venue that you're in on a short tour, for example. And you can now play that back and readjust the EQ and, and whatnot that you need to do to get ready for the new venue that you're in. And you don't even need to have the band there. Of course, it's always nice to have the band there, but sometimes life doesn't work out that way. Another great use for it is to teach people. If you want people to get used to a desk, to get used to tweaking EQs and going through the routing and that sort of thing with real noise coming through the desk, not just an oscillator, you can play something off from your DAW and you can have someone tweak the EQ and the compression and the gate and get used to that workflow and actually have feedback, you know, hear it coming back from the speakers as they do that. So I hope you found that one helpful. Let me know what you're using. Let me know if there's something else that you would like to see. And as always, like and subscribe to the channel if it's really helpful to you. I've got a workshop which is free for you to take. It's the first module of a larger course that you can just go in and it sets all the fundamentals for getting ready to work with the stage. So if you're a beginner, if you're a hobbyist or you just do this on a volunteer basis and you just wanna know exactly what you're touching on the stage every single day, then this is a great place to start for you. I'll leave a link to that down below. The main takeaways from this, I would say, are just make sure that you're connected using a USB cable in this case, and make sure that your computer, whether that's a Mac or a Windows machine, has the correct drivers installed to recognize that USB card in the mixer as its own audio device. Then it's just a case of opening up your digital audio workstation and selecting your playback engine to be that USB card. And then from that point on, it's just simple routing within the mixer, which you can find out about in other videos. I'll link to them below. And you just set your input channels to be from that USB card. So let me know if that was helpful. Let me know if you use this as part of your workflow. Obviously it's really, really useful for things, especially for learning, because you can pretend to mix a band any day you, you want. You know, you don't need a band in the venue, which is a great help because they're quite hard to come by when there's no gigs. And I'll see you in the next video.